Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we got Will Johnson. How you doing, Will? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. You? Good. I am. Uh, we we had a kind of like a little panicky moment there where I was trying to figure out how computers work, but uh, but everything looks good <laughs> here. So um, I need to fix the size of this window right quick because it just did just did a thing. So give me one second while I fix this window size. Sure. Transform. Fit it to the window. Drag it up this size. All right. So, uh, so yeah, today what we want to do is we want to build a personal site for Will. Um, and so Will's sharing his screen right now, and uh, we're just going to pair program on this. <laughs> Um, before we get started, Will, you want to give a little background on on yourself? Talk about kind of who you are, what your what your story, what you're doing now. Sure, sure. Uh, so I'm a self taught developer. Uh, about I don't know, something like last year, still learning myself how to code. And so since I didn't have any experience, I was thinking of how can I, you know, get into this industry. So uh, I went to social media because that's kind of what I've used in other points I used to like game and stuff and do like YouTube mm. uh, so I use like social media as a way to like get noticed or you know build my brand so to speak um, sure. uh, end up you know getting a lot of not like a lot of notoriety but I know like building like really good relationships through social media and people seeing the stuff that I do yeah uh, and end up getting a job at Egghead uh, as a learner advocate uh, because I will post on social media like what I was learning you know what problems I was having um, and things like that. And I kind of built my reputation as someone who who's hungry to learn. So now I'm doing things like this and we do like community live streams of us studying to just, you know, push the things that we do uh, in the dark out in the open. So, you know, everyone can see and benefit from. Yeah. And I, I like love this model. Um, it's such a, it's such a cool thing to see specifically just like how open you are with the learning um because you know i think that there's a movement to to do that to be more willing to just kind of learn in public and and be open about what's working what's not all those good things and um you know i think that it's it's very very cool to see that you know you're not the only person who's struggling with something or that yeah that, you know yeah. other people are are learning this stuff too um and so kind of in the spirit of that i think today is going to be a good time because what we're going to try to do is uh, we're going to dig into building a Gatsby site. Now, have you built Gatsby sites before? No, I have not. I was waiting for today. <laughs> All right, this is going to be great. Um, so cool. Then uh, let's let's figure out what we want to do first. So um, probably the first thing we want to do is open up a Chrome window and we'll just kind of poke around a little bit and see what we can get. Um, so I think sure. I think what we're looking for is like, let's go get a, let's find the theme we want to use. Um, and so it, you had talked about wanting to use the Gatsby egghead theme, right? Like they've got yeah, this, this one here. Yeah. So this is a cool theme. Um, it's uh, put together. Is this, was this Voight's work? I don't know. Oh yeah. I, I can't remember, but uh, the, so the egghead team kind of put together this, this really cool, just general template for for uh, for Gatsby. And I think that looks really, really nice. Um, and it's a good place to start, right? So um, yeah, so let's yeah. so here's the starter, but then specifically we're we're gonna use the theme version of this, right? Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so I think what we want to do, is um, let's start by going in and creating a new Gatsby site. And so we can do that in your terminal. Um, do you have the Gatsby CLI installed? No, not on this computer. Okay. Do you prefer using Yarn or NPM? Uh, it's Yarn on here. All right, cool. So let's do a Yarn Global Add. Gatsby dash CLI. Cool. 
and then that's gonna so that's gonna give you like the global Gatsby tools, and that's gonna be really helpful for us because what we want to do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a couple things where we want to just be able to like run Gatsby commands real quick. Um, okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to pick what folder this is gonna live in. So do you have a spot on your computer where you prefer to keep sites? No, no, we can just make one. Okay, cool. So yeah, just whatever you want to call it. All right, and then move in there. And so now um, we can honestly, let's do like a yarn in it to set it up as a, yeah. And then you can just kind of probably just hit enter on most of these because I don't think we'll need to change much here. Yeah, at some point you may want to go back in and like add the author and stuff like that so that you got credit on your own site. But um, with from here, Let's open this in VS Code. So um, you, it looks like you've got VS Code open. Oh, we might, yeah, the, I think you haven't installed the CLI command. But we can just open it the, the old fashioned way, right? Yeah, the old fashioned way. I think it was under your root folder, which would be like, yeah. let's see, yeah, up. In there, uh oh, no. that's uh -oh. that's not the one. <laughs> we going, we going full corgis. Oh, it's almost time. <laughs> uh, close folder. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, we got the we got the storm happening. <laughs> oh wait, that didn't open it, but no, it's open. Yes, yeah, open. Just the package that Okay. All right, cool. So you got a package JSON. So now um, there are a few ways that we could do this. I, I think the easiest way would be to just, let's just start with um, an empty folder and we'll just kind of build up from there. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, either in your terminal or you can open the, the VS Code terminal, whichever you prefer. Um, yeah, so let's run uh, yarn add Gatsby, React, and React-DOM. You need dash or anything in the here? Uh, Just React and then space React.DOM? That's, yep, that's it. Okay. Cool. And then <laughs> who who's this talking about KC represent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that uh is that Jennifer Wadella in the chat? What up? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's up? Oh, we got Tony, we got we got Chris. Oh yeah, we got a we got a great crew in here today. What's up, everyone? Um so yeah, let's let's dive in here. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is let's just make a let's just make like a page. Um, and maybe we can do this by looking at the example first because that way we won't do a bunch of, of stuff. Um, okay. Or, you know what, before we do themes at all, let's look at how like Gatsby just makes a page. Because I, I feel like that's, that's a good thing to just kind of step through. So let's create yeah. a folder called source, um, just right next to the package JSON there. Uh, you, mine here. Yeah, you can. I just do it right there. Um, yeah, there. That one. Uh, SRC. Sorry, you can just hit enter to rename it. Yep. And then inside of that one, let's make another folder called Pages. Okay. 
and let's create a file called index.js. We got Angel Banks. What's up, everybody? Good crew out here today. Um, That's right, Midwest is the best. <laughs> I'll keep my West Coast mouth shut. <laughs> All right, so let's do uh, so let's import React from React, um, and, and React is going to be uppercase. Have you written a lot of React? Uh, I've learned it, but now I'm like a, not like a ton. Okay, cool. Just holler if I go too fast over something because I I tend sure. to to glaze over some of this stuff. Cool. All right, and then uh, below this, we're gonna just export default. Uh, we got an extra E in export there. Uh, no, wrong letter. <laughs> um, and then we can do a, a like a fat arrow function, so parentheses, and then uh, the equal sign arrow, and then uh, let's just do parentheses. We're just going to direct return here. Um, and inside of that, we can put a like H1 tag and just say hello world. So in the, the second here. set of parentheses, yeah. Because what we're doing in this case is we're we're telling it to just return whatever we give it, which is why we're using parentheses mm -hmm. instead of braces. Um, and so, we, yeah, we're just saying, like, we don't need quotes or anything. We can just write it. This is, this is kind of a weird thing about JSX if you've never used it before. Um, cool. So save that, right? And now in your terminal, just run Gatsby develop. Yep. And so this, All right, so you see that localhost 8000? Uh, mm -hmm. op open that up in a tab. I think you can even just like command click on it, honestly. It's a, it was an 8000? 8000. There you go. You've officially built your first Gatsby site. Um, so, and that, that's, the, that's kind of the nice thing about this is like it takes less, it's, it's very low setup. Like a lot of Gatsby sites come with a bunch of boilerplate. Um, because there's things that you'll need, like, you know, you want to have SEO stuff, you want to add a, a RSS feed, things like that. So a lot of times mm -hmm. the, the templates come with all of this stuff pre-installed. And that can feel a little bit overwhelming because Gatsby sites have a million ways you can go. There are tons of plugins and all that stuff. But what, uh, what Gatsby really requires, like in the general sense, is like that file. You, you install Gatsby, React, and React DOM, create that source pages index, and that's it, you got a Gatsby site. Um, so okay. from here, we can go further. And the way that I think we wanna do that is let's jump into that Egghead uh, theme repo. And I wanna look at their example site. So that example folder that they've got there, just dive yeah. right into the source code. Okay. Tomas, do yeah, you actually like know them. what a group of corgis is called? Like, have you looked this up? I feel like it's going to be something really poetic, like a, like a, what's, what's what, like a rowdy of, of corgis or a, a floof of corgis or something. Nothing. Tomas isn't even paying attention. Um, okay. So inside here, let's take a look at the Gatsby dash config. <laughs> So it looks like what we're going to need is um, we have some metadata. So there's the path prefix and stuff like that. Um, so we'll have to set this up in our site as well. And it looks like there's like an external config folder there. And then below where on line 31 where it says plugins, mm -hmm. we see mm -hmm. the theme itself. 
And then we've got a folder for like where the content is. We've got the manifest, which is for um, like progressive web apps. The manifest, have you seen an app that like, you open the site in your browser and it's like add to home screen. Mm -hmm. That's the manifest is what causes that to work. Um, oh, okay. So then let's see what's below that. Um, I okay, so that's it. So in th this is really cool because if we if we look at what's inside the Egghead blog theme, it's a lot. It's setting up a RSS feed. Mm -hmm. It's setting up SEO uh, metadata like the the head tag. Um, it's mm -hmm. got all this blogging configuration and, mm -hmm. and MDX and all this power is in there. Um, so yeah, it's it's very very cool. Oh wait, we've got info on on what a what a corgi. <laughs> We gotta figure this out. Uh, oh no, it's not. A pair. Okay, according to this blog post, which I think we're gonna have to take as canon, a group of corgis is called a wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> a wiggle I mean, of corgis. It's... That's incredible. It's also a grumble of pugs, which is which is by far the best thing I've ever heard. Um, all right, so where, where's the rest of my stuff in here? My stuff here. Is that a, is MW Quotes Matt from a JavaScript KC? He wants to know how does he Corgi? <laughs> oh, uh, how do you Corgi? So the, the Corgi is, um, it's actually one of Chris Biscardi's emotes. Let me see if I have a. So the only way that you can get it right now is if you subscribe to Chris Biscardi. Um, I think what we're going to do, though, there's a group of us who are all kind of doing the party corgi uh, thing. And we, I think we're all going to add it as an emote so that we can play this game on everybody's channel. Um, yeah, <laughs> you've got just a killer crew coming out to support you today. Like the whole whole city of Kansas City is out here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, everybody. Um, all right, so here's what we need. Let's uh, let's. Oh man, Ben's taking care of everybody. Thank you, oh, Ben, for giving. What's up, Rhea? <laughs> I'm into it, man. This is great. Uh, <laughs> so what we're gonna do to actually put this together is we're going to install um, really the the same thing. So let's back out. Uh, you see this config website? Let's Let's back out and look at that in the example site. I want to see that that config. It's going to be that top folder. You don't want to hate her. Yeah, and let's look at the what's in here. Okay. So it looks like what we're going to need to do is let's just go ahead and create this same file. I don't know if it needs to be separate, but um, rather than trying to, to debug things, Let's uh, let's just kind of use this. So the okay. way that the way that we'll do this then is we're going to go back to your code and let's install. So we can uh, hit Control C to stop Gatsby in your terminal. Uh, you got to be selected in the terminal for that to work. There you go. And then let's yarn add Gatsby theme, uh, Gatsby dash theme dash egghead dash blog. I always feel like I'm going to spell Gatsby wrong, no matter how many times I've typed it it's, over these last few weeks. It's a hard one. I um, <laughs> it's so it's so difficult to spell that people like Amberly Romo on the team has built a like Gatsby <laughs> uh, website because that's a really common typo. All right, so it was Gatsby at, or you know, at Gatsby dash theme dot, or what was the rest? Egghead dash blog. So we just want that whole that whole package. Okay. You Brendan in here too, man. Y'all are cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Uh oh, it's something. Gatsby theme 
egghead dash blog. Do we get that wrong? Yes, we do. Let's go. Let's go look at what the the package is called. Um, so go to example again. Um, yeah, one more layer back, and then go to the Gatsby config. The the Gatsby. Oh uh, yeah, right here. And let's look at uh, the plugin section. It was like line thirty one, I think, mm -hmm. or line thirty three. Gatsby theme egghead blog. Did we get that? Like that's what we put in, right? Gatsby theme egghead blog. Hmm. Let's look at the package JSON. Maybe it's maybe it's set up differently. Okay. Whoops. Oops. I really need a mouth. I do not like navigating with the touchpad. So you you click yeah click there. Gatsby theme egghead blog. Oh no, did they not? Maybe they never published it. Mm. Let's let's check. Um, Gatsby theme egghead blog. Oh, it's it's prefixed. Um, so we need to install. Uh, go to go to npmjs.com. And then search for um, Gatsby theme egghead blog. Okay, so that's what we need. So click into that. And um, you can just on the right hand side there, you see where it's got the install. Mm -hmm. You can just select that. Um, and then go into your, your terminal again. No, I'm going to do the one that's in here. Yeah. So, uh, paste that and then you can, you can hit the backspace or the back arrow to go and change that to yarn add if you want. Um, that'd probably be a good idea since you've got a, you've got a yarn lock going. It's good once you've picked one to, to be consistent with it. Yeah. Makes sense. And then change that I. Oops. That's fine. <laughs> um, I think the eye might just skip. I don't think you can have a. <laughs> uh, Tomas, this is the first time you saw the NPN homepage. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever looked at the actual homepage. I always go straight to packages. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all out with the no hold music, no nothing. Killing me with the sound effects chat. A whole, whole bucket of fun ways that you can play. Who's that? Okay, so now we've got that. Let's check your package JSON real quick to make sure that we didn't just end up with some weird package. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's just delete that line nine. Line nine. Yeah. That okay. I, we don't, I don't know what that is and I don't want it in your package. So go ahead and save <laughs> and then just run yarn again. And that'll, that'll remove it uh, in the terminal though. Yeah. I thought I clicked it fast enough. Hey Lily. Oh, we got Grant in here too. What a great, what a great. I, I feel like I know I want to do the um, the Timmy voice from from South Park. What a great audience! <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a great audience! Um, no, this is this is awesome. I'm so happy to see everybody in here. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Okay, so now we've got the theme. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up that config like it was on the um, on the Egghead site. So let's go back to that Egghead example repo. And go to that config folder first, and let's create this. So we're going to create a, a web a website JS inside of a config folder on your okay. your site. And honestly, like you can just copy paste that, and it's going to be right at the top level, so next to that source folder. Um, uh, 
shortcut for that to make your life easier. But yeah, you can create it here. Yeah, and then you'll just have to drag it out so it's not in the source folder. Um, I would drag it down. Oh, where did it just go? Nah, I'm where did it, where did it go? Uh, <laughs> we may have lost it. <laughs> um, so if you want, it underneath yarn lock, that empty space, just uh, mm -hmm. control click down there. Uh, oh, you got it here. You're good. All right. And then inside here, now you, you're good. It's already out. Oh, okay. Um, we want to we want to put in website.js. And then yeah, if, just grab all of that, and then we'll um, just edit Oops. that to match your your stuff. So we should be able to. So basically, what we're doing while while you fill that out, I'll just kind of talk to fill space. Um, okay. So what we're doing here is we're we're walking through the config on the site and making sure that all of the custom stuff that is used inside of the theme is going to reflect the right values. So we're we're basically just building up um, all of the information about Will site so that you know when we create. Twitter share cards or when the, the RSS feed or like the SEO titles and stuff, it's going to read these, like it's going to read this data. Um, so that's, that's why we're setting this up. Um, and a lot of this, like you can leave some of this and we'll play with it once we go. Okay. I think it's under terminal. You yeah, know I'm it. pretty much. You got it. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, save that and let's, then we need to create your Gatsby config. So um, if you want, in the Blake space under yarn.lock, you can just right click or control click, and uh, that'll let you create a new file. Did it pop? It did pop a window. Yeah, there you go, new file. And then you can Gatsby config, Gatsby dash config. .js. Okay. And then inside here, we want almost everything that we just got out of that Gatsby config in the example file. So we can go back to the egghead repo and uh, jump up to the example folder. And then grab the Gatsby config there. And yep. So now one thing that we're missing here, and we'll we'll just comment it out for now, we haven't installed mm -hmm. this manifest plugin. So we're gonna need to either install that or or leave it out. Um, we may as well just install it because it's an easy one. So let's create this file. No, oh, okay. So yeah, you can just paste that in. And then uh, up on, let's see, go down a little bit. I think it's around like line 40-ish or line 37 there. Copy the name of that plugin. Uh, inside the yeah, and then just down below in the terminal, just yarn add and paste that plugin name in there. Okay. Yep. And so this way now we'll have uh, we'll we'll just be able to run this. And so okay. if we if we scroll up, let's kind of walk through and look at what's happening. Um, okay. So up at the very top. We're pulling in the website config that we created. So that's the details, the site title, your name, your social, you know, your social properties, links, stuff like that. Um, the path prefix is why is this being set? The 
pa oh the path prefix is like if you wanted to have your blog at like slash blog or um you know some something else like posts or whatever you could set a path prefix and um and do that we're gonna leave this default so your site is going to show blog posts at like will johnson io slash post name um mm -hmm. and i think i personally like that that's the way i do it on my site because urls like having slash blog i don't know that it conveys a ton of information and for me at least it's not like i don't know I, i've never cared about it so uh so i think the defaults are fine here yeah then we get into hey thanks for the subscription web Dever. um then we get into the site metadata and that's going to be pulling directly from the config so from lines five down pretty much to like yeah, we just keep on rolling. I think it's going to be around line line 28 or so is where we'll finish. Ah, okay, so mini bio. That you'll want to edit, but let's let's get uh let's get the site up and running first and then we'll come back and fix things. Sure. So then um down yeah. below on line 31 we get into the plugin config. And so we're installing Gatsby theme egghead blog. It's expecting content to exist at content slash posts. So we're going to need to create content slash posts. Um, okay. And then we also have the manifest. And the manifest is for our, um, like, favicons, setting the site colors. Like, if you look on your phone when you open certain pages and, like, the the menu bar changes color and stuff like that, that's mm -hmm. you, you, that gets controlled through the manifest. And that's also what controls putting the site, um, it, like, is optional to put on your home page. Um, okay. So this is assuming that we have an Android Chrome favicon. So there's also a possibility that you just may not want to deal with this right now because you're going to need some images and stuff. Um, do you have like a a logo or anything like that that you want to use? Mm -mm. All right. So may maybe for now, what we can do is let's just comment that whole plugin out. So from fifty nine. 59? Yeah, line 59. Oh, we're going up. down? Yeah, we'll go up to um, the opening bracket before the, the plug-in name. So keep on going down, down, Ooh. probably like 30, 36 there. So we'll, um, and then you can hit, I think, option forward slash. We'll just comment the whole thing out. Oops. Um, no, control Z don't work on Max? It, uh, command Z. Okay. Will. Okay. Yeah. And then I think it's um like command and then the 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 one with the question mark on it. There you go. Yeah. So now that's that's commented out. It won't try to run. Um and okay. so we're just going to be working on the the blog now. So go ahead and save All that. Right. And then let's create a content folder. So if you go back to that examples um and go up one level just to the example folder, and then you see content posts. Mm -hmm. Let's just grab one of them. Um, let's do like a demo O one, and okay, yeah, we can just pull all of this straight out. I think. Um, well, let's maybe not even worry about that. Go to go to index.mdx. Mm -hmm. And all right, so here's the details. So hit raw. So just go ahead and like um, select this whole page. Command A will get it all. And then uh, copy that. And let's go into VS Code. And I'm going to show you my favorite VS Code hack. So so down below yarn dot lock. Do the mm -hmm. control click thing uh, below it in the blank space. Hit new file. And then write content slash posts uh, slash, not dot. Yeah. Content slash post S uh, slash test slash index.mdx and then just hit enter 
and it just made all those folders for you. So now you don't have to create them individually. You can just, <laughs> just do it all at once. Um, so <laughs> yeah, then you can just paste that, that in. Right, okay, so then let's go up and I wanna figure out what images we need. So it looks like that banner.png on line seven there. We're gonna need mm -hmm. that. Um, the hello world thing, that's like an MDX component. Maybe we can skip that. So go ahead and delete like line 10 and line 12 there. Okay. We'll, we'll play with MDX in a minute, but for now I, I don't. Let's let's go as low low impact as we have to, yeah. um, and then go back to the example, and let's go up a level, and grab that banner.png. So, yeah, that one, um, and just go ahead and download that. You might have to uh, right click and save on. Yeah. And just save that directly to your uh, the same that test folder that you just created for the MDX, or you can put it in downloads and drag it in, whichever whatever is easier for you. Oh, there you go. Mm. I'm I'm a big fan of the like downloads and then drag it in kind of thing. All right, so now that you got that. Um, Yeah, just drop it right in that text folder. Doesn't want to play. All right, so um, if you go to the go to your finder, you talking about the the, the spotlight thing or yeah, a little like the, oh, you're talking about this thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And then go to your, um, there you go, that one. And then just drag that straight over into the text folder. There you go. Yeah. All right. So now, theoretically speaking, we should be able to save um, save that index, index.mdx. And then let's go down and let's run Gatsby develop. And just like fingers and toes crossed that this works on the first try. All right. Um, hit hit Control C. It looks like we got some. I think that's one that I was trying to move the picture. Ah, uh, oh, it just copied that whole path. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's cool that it did that though. Like took the took the path and dropped it right in there for you. Um, so just yeah, run Gatsby cool. Gatsby develop. Later, MW codes. Thanks for stopping by. Not finished open and validate gas we config. Uh did it not like our did we miss something? All right, go go up. Where's that open and validate? Let's find the first error. Local plugin. Oh, oh, I know what happened. Um so look in your Gatsby your package.json. Okay, so you see how on line seven it's called Egghead IO Gatsby theme Egghead blog. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to call it in Gatsby config too. So um, go ahead and copy paste that whole thing the from the at Egghead all the way over. Uh, not the mm -hmm. not the version name and stuff, just the inside the quotes there. The at Egghead. Okay. Yeah, copy that and then go into Gatsby config, and uh, it's on line thirty one, I think. Um, 33, replace that resolve. So that should be the at egghead thing. Yeah. All right, so save that. And let's try this again. Okay, that's promising. Uh oh. All right, we got an error. So let's go look at that error. <laughs> All right. Um, you, I think you can just drag the terminal taller so we can see what it says. Okay. All right. So swing up. Um, and let's 
I mean, it looked like it, it worked at least. It got through, so let's poke at what it says it didn't like. Okay, keep keep going up. All right, so it didn't. We didn't give it keywords. Keep going up. There's another one. Keywords. Author. Keywords. All right. So um, I saw something in the theme that I, I think we might need to keep. So go ahead and go back to that example. Um, so I think just yeah, back. And go to the posts folder. And look at that front matter placeholder down at the bottom. I think we might need to include this. Or let's so let's open up that, that MD file and see what's in there. And hit raw again. So that's all the available front matter, which means we should put all of this into basically we just want to copy this. So go um, go into your posts folder and create um, you can yeah do that and then do like front matter placeholder. Oh, okay. Did it have a it or the front matter. matter then dash? Oh, okay. Yeah. This this matters less. We're just we wanna we're basically given Gatsby something that it can um, and then do slash index.md. Yeah. Cool. And just paste that in there. All right. Now um Run, stop Gatsby and run it one more time. And that should okay. solve the problem. I think if you just hit up, it'll get let you run your last command too. Isn't that cool? That's, that's another little like time-saving hack that's been very valuable for me. <laughs> right, so we got something yeah. else in there. Let's see. Extract queries from components. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, or... but it doesn't like... Not query field author. Why can't we use query field author? What's the go up to the author there on the, the MDX? On the MDX? Or like on, on this this, this index.md, let's take a look at the okay. front matter. But there's no author. Um let's look at the other one, the index.mdx. No author there either. Hmm. So maybe we just need to include just one. Just add one. Yeah, just try adding an author. Yeah, just put like anything. All right, let, and then try to run it again. Let's see if it if that fixes it. Okay. Okay, so it gave it, did it give you another error? If you scroll up, warning. Now go now go down. The GraphQL query and the non-page component. Which one it was? I like swallowed that. Right, let's just click through the page and let, let's just click through and see what came up. Um, so okay. hit hit eight thousand that local host eight thousand. Uh, but without the GraphQL, so you can delete the. Yeah. Okay. So let's try, try just do like slash 404. Let's see what pages there. Um, in okay. development, if you want to see what pages in your Gatsby site are, are that exist, you can just type slash 404. <laughs> but it's not showing sense. any. Try, uh, try just like some nonsense instead of 404. All right, that's what I wanted to see. All right, so so check out here. There's like the the demo dash o one. 
click into that. I want to see if that created a page. Okay, so scroll down. Okay, so that's do that's doing what we wanted. Um, okay. Go up. Let's go to the blog page. Try just going to slash blog. Okay, scroll down. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is working, but something something's not quite where we want it to be. So let's go mm. let's go back to our website config. Uh, oh my. Yeah, and yours, and let's see if maybe there's a path prefix set in here. So um, path prefixes slash. Okay. Scroll down. All right, let's let's look at the example again and see how they set it up. Ooh, Jail Nason, Jay Nielsen just had an idea that maybe we need to remove that that post or that um, example page, but. Yeah, let's hit that. Let's look at example and see if anything else got created in there. Content posts. Yeah, let's just try deleting the um, that source folder that I had you create, because it might be that we're conflicting with what um, with what Gatsby's trying to do. Yeah, just delete it straight up. Okay. Uh, you can, yeah. and then yeah. It'll be down, down at the bottom of that. You'll have to scroll. Uh, I need a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, stop and start. Let's see if that helps. Okay. Oh, I'm not seeing any big warnings spit out, so that's good. Yeah. All right, let's try this again. Let's uh, let's refresh on the localhost 8000. See what we see. Success. Okay. Like it worked to me. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's good news. That puts us in really good shape here. We've got uh, the, the sites up and running. You've got all that. Now we can just start looking around at where that stuff is set. So let's, like, let's look in your config. Holy oh, buckets, wow. did that just work? All right, hold on, let me yes. plug, the, plug the laptop up. All right. So let's, um, let's look. Where did, we might have to shadow some things. Um, so I want to see where that, that bit came in from. So let's, um, let's scroll down the config a little bit. I want to see where this headline is coming in. It's on here? Yeah, I'm wondering if it's even set here. I don't know if it is. Yeah, it's not. Okay. So in order to actually change anything here, we're going to have to shadow a little bit. So let's, uh, okay. let's go back to the site real quick the real site yeah like or the right demo here. so you yeah. see this like your blog says the things you want to say mm -hmm. i want to i want to fix that i want you to be able to put your own headline there okay. so in order to do that we're going to have to shadow this component so let's go to the the repo again okay. and i want to look um, so go, let's go out into the actual theme now. So hit Gatsby theme egghead blog. And then in the packages folder in that Gatsby theme egghead blog. This here? Yeah. 
let's look at the source. And then let's look at pages and index. And I just want to see what's happening here. So let's roll down. There's a container and an H1. Okay. All right. So all of this is. Okay, so the shadowing on this is going to be a little bit tricky because the way that you shadow is we basically just create a copy of the whole uh, the whole file. Um, and what we can do actually, you know what? let's just do it. We'll, we'll just do it and we'll walk through how it works. So go ahead and um, okay. copy this whole section. If you hit raw, you can just do the the whole page. All right. And so um, now we're going to introduce component shadowing. And so component shadowing is the idea that in Gatsby themes, we can replace just components without having to replace the entire theme. Um, so the way that we'll do that is uh, create a source folder. And then Inside of that, we're going to create a folder that matches the name of the theme. So source slash at egghead IO slash Gatsby theme egghead blog. Does that make sense? What was, the, what was the little trick again? You said to I click see, what yeah, and then click? Hit new file. Well, I'm so, about the little uh, trick you showed me. Control click down there. Good job, control click. And then hit okay. new file. Mm -hmm. And then do source src slash at egghead io slash gatsby dash theme dash egghead dash blog so we're basically just using the whole name of the the package okay. slash components And then this one I think was called, or sorry, not components, uh, delete components. So uh, slash pages slash index.js. Yeah. And then you can paste in the whole thing. And up here, what we all we want to do really is at the very, very top. Do you see those relative imports like lines five through nine? Mm -hmm. um, we need to rewrite those. So uh, okay. I'll show you a trick for this. Hi highlight the two dots on the top one on line five. And then hit Command D. See, I've got the next one. Now Command D again. Two more times. Uh, uh, no, so co copy the first one on, on, yeah, and then hit Command D. So copy it first, so what you don't even have to copy it, just hit command D. Okay. And then you see how it highlighted the second one? Now hit it again. Uh -huh. Hit the oh, third okay. one, fourth one, fifth one. Now you can you can replace all of them at once. So uh do at egghead IO. We're gonna put the package name in here basically. Um, slash Gatsby theme egghead blog. No, in uh in front of the components there. Oh, okay. Dash theme. Yeah. Slash source. Slash. And that's, that's it. So basically what okay. you just did is you changed it from being a local require, like relative to the, the original index file to being an mm -hmm. absolute require from the, the theme package. So if you save this and stop and read, or actually, so save it and then go down and let's change that banner. Uh, make it say something different. Yeah, right there, 39. I watched Dark Knight Rises last night. <laughs> All 
All right, so save that and then um, stop and restart the blog. Whenever you do new shadowing, you've got to stop and restart to get it to pick up the, the new files. Okay. Now, assuming we didn't typo anything, and assuming I got the names of things right, both of which are big ifs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially then if I'm the one who's typing. When we refresh the page, uh, you should see that new banner. Yes. Boom! Okay, so I this am is... the League of Shadows. <laughs> <laughs> um, but from here, now you can go in and you can start changing things. So you can mess with the settings. If a thing you want to change isn't in the settings, you can shadow it. Um, mm -hmm. And so that gives you total control, more or less. You can change colors. You can change um, like the, the headings and stuff. Um, your about page, your contact page, all that stuff is going to be like part of the shadowing, part of, of what you're building. Um, okay. So does that all make sense? Like we, we just covered a whole lot of, of ground. So what, what questions do you have? Uh, same goes to you, chat. What questions do you have about how this all works? Uh, I mean, let's see. I mean, it's a lot, but I mean, I guess like, uh, you know, it made, it made sense, probably just because I had you, you know, telling me where to go. Um, so, so why do we create this folder? So the, um, the way that themes are designed is they, like, the theme itself exists here, right? Let me try to get into the camera frame. So the theme exists here, okay. and when you when you're using that theme, all the files are contained within the theme. But we don't want to restrict you to being you're not stuck just with whatever the theme opinions are. Like you're a developer, you're going to want to tweak your stuff. So mm -hmm. what what the decision was made, um, and what Chris Biscardi did when he was working on the original themes algorithm, was this idea of uh, the progressive disclosure of of things that you want to do. It's not all or nothing. It's you, you can use the theme and then you can selectively replace different parts of the theme, like different components. Um, we call that component shadowing. And so the way that shadowing works is that you are telling the theme to replace one file. And to make that understandable and uh, straightforward, what we decided to do was if you create a folder in your source directory, with the same name as your theme package. Um, and mm -hmm. since the egghead theme is namespaced, it goes into two folders, right? We've got a folder for the namespace and then a folder for the package name. Um, it will then say anything in here that matches a path to the source directory inside of the, the egghead theme, um, mm -hmm. we can replace. So like if we wanna replace the, uh, say the, the layout, um, we could go and create inside of uh, our source egghead.io Gatsby theme on the, like in our files, mm -hmm. we would be able to create a new folder in there called components and a file called layout with a capital L like, like they've got up there mm -hmm. on, uh, yeah. on line five. We could create a new layout folder or a new layout component. And if we put it at source egghead Gatsby theme, egghead blog uh, slash components slash layout, then Gatsby will see that we're wanting to shadow that and it will replace the component in the theme with okay. our theme, with our component. Um, and so okay. that, that allows us to override colors, to override text, override components, override queries if we want. Um, it, you're basically able to do a whole bunch. And depending on how you build your themes, you can actually abstract a lot of this away. So like the way that I tend to do it is I would have, I would have like, all, there's a lot of styling in this. So it's a lot to copy. Um, if it was me, I would probably have like a single component that took the text I wanted to, to make shadowable as mm -hmm. a prop or something. And then I would let you just shadow the, where the component is called. So you're just like, you know, exporting that one component with new text in the props. 
And that way all yeah. the rest of it is, is abstracted and you don't have to think about it unless you literally want to change it. Um, so, but that's kind of a design. You can, you know, you, you get to make a decision as a theme creator on how you would do that. Um, but so with that, that's, does the shadowing algorithm make sense? Like you can replace any file in a theme by matching the path in the, the site that uses the theme? Yeah, that make, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, Let's see what else. Chat. Um, <laughs> to publish a theme, yeah, Nikki's got a link to the course. Um, I did a course on on Gatsby theme authoring that'll that'll share that. Uh, publishing a theme on npm is kind of the same as publishing anything on npm. If you've got a package JSON and you've got npm installed, you can actually just run npm publish and it will push that theme live. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. I would. I would recommend checking out the NPM docs on on publishing, but ultimately that's the that's the gist of it. If you if you've got a theme that works, NPM publish that thing and it goes live. Um, Tomaz asks if it's common to use more than one theme at once. I personally do. Uh, I like to use themes as almost like pages. So I have a a theme for like a speaking page, and it has a it like reads from Airtable and um, creates a like a display on the site and has a couple other little things, and I I like install that on on my site. Um, yeah, so if you go to the speaking page, that's like that's a separate unit of functionality that somebody would want. And if you scroll down, you can see the here it's got like upcoming stuff, which I'm out of date. I haven't done that. But then the past stuff, it pulls in, like that's where I've been, that's the the link to the thing that I did, and, and you know, like some extra details. That all gets pulled out of another database I use Airtable for. Um, and so that is, if it's not published as a theme, I started converting it to a theme and maybe didn't get all the way through it. Uh, but then like my blog is its own theme, um, and so I, yeah, I think like themes are intended to be composable. There are some challenges with making themes composable, and so that that's something that we're that the Gatsby community is still kind of working out is how to do that. Um, I know that like Tony in the chat has had some some thoughts around the way that like theming works, and um, you know Chris was the original author of themes, and he's got some ideas about how to make that composability work. Um, John O'Tander and, and Brent Jackson at Gatsby are still doing a lot of work on that sort of idea like how to how to do those sorts of things um but uh yeah so all of those sorts of things are um still somewhat in flux like the the theming technology is stable the practice of how to actually use it is still kind of being uh worked out by the community like we gotta we've got to decide together what best practices are um Cool. So do you have any other questions or do you want to play with some MDX before we wrap? Yeah, sure. Just, uh, I don't I don't have any more <clears throat> All right. that I can think of. I'll send you a message if I do. Yeah, yeah. Definitely please do. You can always get at me on, on Twitter. Uh if you're in a Slack with me, you know, whatever. Like I'm I'm always happy for those sorts of questions. Um so let's let's go into this text folder where we have the index.mdx. And let's create mm -hmm. let's create our own component. So in that text folder, let's create a new file um, inside text itself. Yeah, cool. And then just let's just call it like um, button.js. Yeah. And what I'm thinking we can do here is let's make a little button that when you click it, it'll increment the count of how many times it's been clicked. Um, okay. Have you you worked with React hooks at all? No, I watched a course on it. Right. So this is going to be fun. We're going to write some hooks. Um, so go ahead and import React from React. And then um, let's uh, do a const called button and make it capitalized. And that's going to equal uh, 
and then uh, do like a, a arrow function, so parentheses and the equal sign, yeah, you got it. Cool. So then on the next line, let's set up our state. We're going to do a count. So const, and then um, use open up square brackets, like for an array. And let's call it count and set count, so separated by comma. And uh, that's going to equal react dot use state uh, capital react. No, okay. And um, that's a function. And let's pass zero as the argument. So what we're saying here is that we're going to keep count, and our initial count is zero. That's what we're passing into use state. Um, so then let's uh, return um, in parentheses, or actually just do a button. Uh, so uh, like a button element, lowercase, and do uh, as the the value, say like click, um, and then. In parentheses, you can just put like the count. So we'll see how many times it's been clicked. And then that'll be wrapped in uh, curly braces so that it, that React knows to use it as. Uh, so it's JSX. It's JSX, yeah. Um, We're wrapping this whole thing. Nope, just the word count because that should that tells. Yeah, that tells JSX that we want to use the count variable. Um, and then in the button itself, let's add an on click. So in the, yeah, it's like an attribute. And we can just do uh, equals and then curly braces. And uh, this is also going to be an arrow function. And we can just put in um, set count. Or that that's going to be the, the return of the arrow function. That we don't we don't need to pass anything into those parentheses. Oh, okay, my bad. No worries. Right there, yeah. Do set count, and then as the argument to that, let's do count plus one. So set count, yeah. Excellent. Okay. So then um, below line six there, just do export default button. Uh, but capital button. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So save that. And then in our index.mdx, we're going to use this. So let's. Uh, uh, below line nine, yep, just do import capital button from, uh, and then just do the, the path to that button file. So dot slash. Which button. is. No, you can just do. Button. It's just going to be uh, relative. So, like, dot slash button. And you don't need to use the extension or anything. And then um, let's let's move the button like in between the first and second paragraph. So uh, on line, yeah, yep. And then just put it in like regular old JSX, and it's self-closing. You got it. Save that. Now let's go visit that that page. So um, I think it's the lovely walk in a park. We get an error. Mm. It didn't say anything. Check the console. Do uh, command option I. You know, there's one thing I have not done on this Mac yet. Look at the console. All right. So let's open. <clears throat> let's open the console and see what happens. All right. Let's scroll up to the top one. 
Okay, so the first thing, we're just getting a button is not defined. So maybe we need to stop and restart because it's a new... Because it's a new file. Let's let's try it. Yeah, stop and restart. Okay. Something else went wrong. We gotta. Oh, sorry. Home oh, cool stuff. All right, roll down, click that button. Yeah, all right. So um, basically, in the chat, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, so basically what you're able to do now is like if you wanted to build a little mini app that you mm -hmm. wanted to share in your, your blog, um, mm -hmm. you could just embed it right in right inside. And the X, <laughs> there's that Corgi. Um, so yeah, this, this is what's really powerful about this is like, you get to write regular and like markdown. Um, but if you want to add something interactive, like if you wanted to add, uh, say a newsletter opt in, or you wanted to add a, a little demo or really whatever you can imagine, you can just build the react component that does that thing and drop it in line like this. Um, and so this is a, I think one of my absolute favorite features of of Gatsby that I've seen in a long time is the really good integration with MDX. Um, so this I think is, is going to unlock a lot of doors. But with that being said, we've, we've kind of built a whole blog. Like there's, there's some work to be done on customizing, you know, like getting that, that config file set up to match all of your, your details, um, mm -hmm. and probably customizing some colors. And then after that, I think you just got to write some posts, right? Uh, yeah. so, do you have any other questions um, you want to dig into now while we're while we're on a call? Uh, same to you, chat. What what else would you like to see? I agree, Tomas. It's pretty pretty incredible. Uh, uh, so, because I tried to, I did try to like use one of these before, uh, like a Gatsby thing. Mm -hmm. So how do i uh get this on al gore's internet yes yeah let's deploy this thing so um go ahead and stop the stop the site all right now run gatsby build and what i'm doing with this is i'm just making sure that uh when we do deploy it it's going to finish building mm -hmm. And while we're waiting for that, are you? Uh, do you have a preferred hosting provider? Or do you want? Do you want recommendations? Uh, I was thinking about using uh, Netlify. That's that would have been what I recommended. I mean, I'm obviously a little little biased, but <laughs> I I was a. Well, this is like I, I'm I'm not just the CEO. I'm also a, a customer. <laughs> <laughs> um. But what's really cool about this is this this is going to give us uh, uh it's going to be really nice. So go ahead and run git init and this is going to turn this into a a git repo. Okay. Um do you have uh let's let's go to your GitHub account. We're going to create a new repo. And you can call this whatever you want. And then we need to set up that remote. Um, so down, you see where it says or push. Uh, yeah. Or push. Yeah. So we're just going to run those two commands. Well, I've never paid attention to that. I always go over and just type it myself. That's funny. Yep. And then we um, we need to commit those files. So do a git status real quick just to make sure that. Uh, before you run this, because we don't really have anything to push yet. 
Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that yeah, we we need to write a uh, dot get ignore because otherwise we're gonna commit the get the node, node modules and stuff. So yeah. um, go ahead and do you still have that example repo open? Because that'll probably be easy. So you can just copy paste it. Yeah, just go all the way back to the root the egghead blog and hit that get ignore. That's not enough. Okay. Um, never mind. We'll do it the we'll do it the other way. So right. create a new file at the, the root called dot get ignore. And put in node underscore modules public. Uh, on the next line, just write public. Public or oh, oh okay. And then uh, on the next line, dot cache. So what we're saying is we don't want to we don't want to put any of the the like compiled files on the GitHub. That that's not useful mm -hmm. for us. Um, okay. And then also go ahead and add yarn dash error dot log. We don't really need that to be committed either. Dash log. Dot log. Yeah, save that. Run that git status one more time. Okay. That looks more like what we're after, right? It's got just the things that we need. So do a git add dash capital A. And that's git add everything. And then I'm paranoid, so what I'll do is I'll run another git status and look at what I've added. Yeah, now we can just look and make sure we didn't accidentally commit like our environment variables or something like that. But this looks right. This is what we want to commit. So, um, okay. so go ahead and do uh, git commit. And then I'd usually use dash m for message. And then in quotes, whatever you want to say. What's your favorite hosting provider and why is it Netlify? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, did we get it all? We got it all? All right, so now if you run a git status, like it. it should show clean. Cool. So now you can do a git push. Um, what is it, dash u? I think that's what it was. It was far right. Git push yeah. dash u or... And that dash u means that it's gonna track the upstream branch so that you can just do like git push, git pull instead of having to type it out the whole way every time. All right, so that's set up. Um, if we refresh that repo, you should see it now. Bam. All right, so now we can go to Netlify. Um, and there are a handful of ways that you can do this. Do you want to learn the CLI or do you want to do it through the web, uh, the, the web app? Let's do the CLI. All right, so yarn global add Netlify dash CLI. And then run Netlify init, or you can do NTL init too if you want. If it's if you like shorter commands. Spell init wrong. Yeah. Yes, I did. Mean oh, look at wrong. wow. That's pretty nifty. That was helpful, um, but that didn't work. So <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was so good to start. Um, <laughs> All right, so yeah, now you're gonna authorize, use GitHub. Yeah, 
Yep. All right. So now if you go back to your terminal, now it's doing it. So let's create and configure a new site. So you can just hit down. And hit enter. Yep. Return. Yep. Well, what am I doing? Uh, it's it's being created computer. on your team. So for like on mine, for example, I'm in like three teams. So I mm -hmm. just it's letting you choose the one you want to create the site in. Um, if it's, okay. yeah, you've only you're only on one team. It looks like so. Yeah, and then I I like to choose a name because otherwise it's gonna do a, a like a randomizer. So mm -hmm. you've been calling it Will Blog, so you can just call it like Will mm -hmm. Blog. Okay. Okay. Um, authorized with GitHub app. Yeah, I would do this one. Okay. So then you can click that GitHub button. And so what this is going to do is it's going to let you hook up to like your, your public repos. And that just means that, uh, Netlify will be able to like pull down that data. Okay, you're good. So you can you can go back to your. Uh... All right, now this is going to line up with Gatsby. So we're going to do. Oh, we're going to have to fix this. So so go ahead and put in um, yarn build. Uh, it's got to be in the bottom there. In the yeah, in the terminal. Yeah. Uh, Link slums. Netlify is not a Gatsby theme. Netlify is a way to deploy. Uh, write public in here because that's where Gatsby builds to is the public folder. Um, so Netlify is a way to deploy any static sites, not just Gatsby. It's like um, it's basically like if if you ever built sites back in the day when you would upload a folder onto FTP, Netlify is kind of like that, but it runs off of Git, so it's like way easier um, to to get set up and run. Um, so yes, you do want to do that. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to make one quick fix because, uh, go into your package JSON. We didn't create a, a build command, so we need to do that. Um, so I think it's actually going to be, uh, down below. So undo that. Yeah. And then on right above that one. So uh, below line 11. Yeah. Um, so add a comma on line 11. And then scripts is going to be the key here. So double quote scripts. It's not going to auto complete there. All right. Um, and then that's an object. Uh, so curly braces. And then in between, we want to create one called build. Uh, and that's going to be in double quotes. And in double quotes here, we're going to say Gatsby build. All right, so save. Um, Hit the compare. Did you miss or? Oh, okay. So if you just want to copy that um, that line twelve that you created, because it we we mm -hmm. do we we're do here. want to hold on to that. Yeah, we're just gonna we we basically created a merge conflict. So just copy that line and then close that. Uh, if you hover over that dot, it'll give you an X up on the like the tab where it says the package JSON. Yeah, you can close that and then close the other part, the one that's unsaved. Close it and it'll say close this one. Yeah, it'll say don't you want to save and you'll say no. And then open it again. And that'll be the, the refreshed version. So then you can just paste in that that line again. Um, and we'll need a comma above line 12 or after line 12. So now, if you uh, if you run git status again, what we should see is that the Netlify Tomal is added, and then the git ignore was modified, and the package JSON is modified. Cool. So let's do a git add all.
uh, link slumps, it does automatically build your site with continuous integration. Um, and you can set it to auto deploy if you want, which is usually what you want. Um, or if you want to do manual reviews first, you can set it to uh, just build and not deploy. So let's uh, do a, just commit this, like set up Netlify would be the, the commit message. Cool. Got an extra N there. Yeah. Uh, and it's dash M before the message. Mm -hmm. All right, and then get push. And then run Netlify open. And that takes you right into your, your blog. So we can look at deploys now. And the first one will have failed because we didn't have a command. Um, but go up to the top. You see that deploys tab there? Mm -hmm. And then hit uh, the one that's building. You can click into it. And we can just follow along as it works. No, OK, while well, it's doing its thing. Mm -hmm. So this usually takes a couple minutes. Um, Uh, Link slumps, we are using just Markdown, uh, specifically MDX as a CMS. So it's kind of file system based. But uh, if you are using Gatsby, you can hook up WordPress as a CMS. Um, you can use Drupal. You can use w really whatever you want. The file system, um, you can hook it into any REST API, any GraphQL API, uh, or some combination thereof. Like That's one of the things that I've liked the most about working with Gatsby is that like on my personal site, I pull in content from Airtable, Markdown, um, I pull in uh, GitHub data, um, a few other things. Like there, there are a lot of ways to do it. Uh, if you've never heard of Drupal, that's totally fine. Drupal is, is PHP. If you're not doing a lot of PHP dev, um, it's not necessary. Like it's, it's something that I've only kind of seen passing in passing. Um, Oh, what, what failed? Where's our error? So it says failed during stage of building site. All right, let's go, let's go poke at this a little bit. Go up, let's find it. Somewhere in here, there's going to be an actual error. Field banner must not have a selection since type string has no subfields. Hmm. That's not good. What did we get? Uh, why did that break here, but not on your, hmm, interesting. We're getting different behavior between your machine and the build machine, which is always a fun, that's a fun <laughs> game to play. Let's try, uh, let's try, just go into that index.mdx. And just remove the quotes in on line seven. Mm -hmm. Just save that and uh, just get you should that I think you can just like close without saving. I don't think you we don't need any of that. Oh, okay. Um, All right, what are you saying? Do next. So I would just like commit that. So git commit dash am is like commit everything with a message. Uh, so uh, lowercase a. And you can just actually put the m right yeah, right there. And then in a I would like what I would probably say is like try to fix <laughs> try to fix bill there. <laughs> <laughs> Please work <laughs> like that. Yeah, let's see if let's see if that does it. Uh, Git push. Um, so what I think is happening here is the way that Gatsby works is it looks at relative files 
and it tries to turn relative files into um, it turns relative files into file nodes. And mm -hmm. so what I think is happening is that it's taking that that banner and it's deciding that it's a string and not expanding it into a file node for some reason. So I'm wondering if if we just like don't explicitly quote it, maybe it will that'll fix it. Um, let's also open that front matter thing too. Uh, the front matter index.md there up above the text banner. Oh wait, so that one doesn't have a banner. Let's make that relative to the one in text. So go up like instead of going dot images, let's go mm -hmm. double dot text. So just rerouting it there, because that that could also be the problem, because it's hitting a an image that doesn't exist, and so mm. it would default to being text. So let's save that and and run it one more time. Will the net Levi open or the Git push and all that? Thanks for thanks for coming out, Maz. We'll see you next time. Um, I appreciate you, Tomas. Uh, I mean, the, so the quotes shouldn't matter this seems way more likely as the as the culprit because okay. we were because what would happen is it would hit this and say oh that's not an image this must be a text field and then you can't have conflicting field types mm -hmm. um so that that sounds like what would break uh, so you want to push and then commit let's yeah do you'll have to do the full commit first Pick up a pigeon is building a personal site using Gatsby and Craft CMS. Um, Craft CMS stuff is cool. I've had, I, I was on the Craft CMS podcast or or a podcast with a bunch of people who work on Craft CMS, and I hadn't really looked at it very much, but it's super cool, like how flexible it is and all the things that it can do. Um, but there, I, there's so many good CMS options now. Like, it it just depends on what you're into, right? Like, Sanity is super configurable. Uh, if you're into like computer sciencey nerdy stuff, they've got all their they've invented all their own languages. Um, if you're into like straightforward, uh, you know the Netlify CMS is really like really kind of as basic as it gets. Um, if you want something like more full featured, WordPress or Ghost or whatever, like the, everything's got a, a headless option. Um, all right, so now if you just we can actually yeah you can. You can open it again, or we can just go back to that tab that's already open. Whatever. Okay. Uh, and if you hit that up arrow on the top right, it'll bounce you back up to the top. Ooh, whoop. And then we can go back to the, all deploys. And we should see for each commit that a new deploy started. So let's hit that. Yeah, that one that's building now. This one, fingers crossed, we're all <laughs> we're referencing all real images now, right? So this this is this is going to work i think i've never even heard of october cms i don't know what it is oh show me potato salad getting closer no, damn it, it still didn't do it. Why? Okay, but why though? The field banner must not have a solution since some string has no subfields. And that is just not correct. Hoof da! All right, so that's exciting. <laughs> I'd say this is the opposite of exciting, Tony. Um, <laughs> all right, let's. Let's see. Hmm. What's going on? What's going on here? So this is failing because let's let's hit the Googles. Uh Gatsby error field must not have a selection. All right, there we go. Top top issue.
closed. So hopefully that's got an option. Um, I like to I like to go straight to the bottom and see if the solution was posted because that tends to help. I'm reading the same thing as you are, trying to figure out what's going on here. Mm, like that didn't work. Image file was not create was not committed to the repo. Did we? Let's take a look at your repo and make sure that that is actually there. So head into yeah. Let's go into posts. Text banners there, and then let's look at the front matter one. Is that expecting it to be a .png? Oh, it's looking for a .jpg. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's still hitting a non-existent thing. So let's fix that in um, in your code editor. Okay, so on line eight, let's let's change that to a dot png. Dot png. Yeah, so it's it's gonna actually match the file that exists. We're we're basically just kind of hacking this around because, um, it, yeah, it, because it's trying to find an image that doesn't exist, it's defaulting back to a string, and and then when we fix it, I just I missed that it, the the thing needed to change. So let's uh let's commit that. But isn't uh hold on. But it's looking for but it's looking for a JPEG, isn't it? Yeah, but the so the image that exists, the one that we're pointing to is the one in the text folder, right? So we're going up a level, down into text, and then we're getting oh, banner.png. Okay. PNG. Okay. So yeah, we're just we're just <clears throat> making sure that it that it exists. Okay. Okay. And if we push that up, head back to Netlify. Check that uh, that most recent deploy, and hopefully this time it's gonna. Oh, I, I think you clicked the link. Yeah, there you go. All right, I believe I believe in us. <laughs> I have faith. Um, and once we get this done, I think we'll we'll call this a good stopping point. Um, yeah. Chat, now's the time if you've got questions, uh, drop them in because we we need them. Also, this is your last chance to trigger sound effects. So, uh, you know, five minute warning here, y'all. Also, I'm out of coffee, so it's about to become an emergency. I appreciate it, Jay Snowman. It was fun. Yeah, this has been this has been great. Um, I always like this stuff too because this is the sort of thing that uh, there are very few things that I feel like I'm good at teaching, um, and so <laughs> usually it's like, all right, so I needed I need adult supervision. Let's let's get through this. Um, so I'm I'm very happy to be in a place where I I feel like I can actually 
be useful, right? Um, so while we're waiting for that to build, where can people find you online? So let's see, we've got like your Twitter here, uh, Will Johnson. I yeah. Am, so I'm going to drop that. Uh, yeah, that's the number one spot. All right. Any Anywhere else? Anything else you want people to check out? I mean, if, if this goes through, then williamjohnson.dev will be my website. But uh, yeah, mainly just Twitter. That's like my favorite social. So the rest of them I don't really use. Yeah, go go follow Will on Twitter for sure. Um, okay, things are happening. Things are happening. Oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, it just worked. It just happened. All right, so go. Uh, so let's it's go good. back up. Holy buckets! Did that just work? <laughs> And then if you go um, to back out or deploys, or you can just click on that will blog at the top. Yeah, so now you can click to that uh, that URL there, will blog. Cool. Okay. So that's working. Now, the part that we're not gonna cover today, but that you'll have to do next, is uh, go back into Netlify. And then go to um, settings on the far right. And domain management. And to get a custom domain, you're going to have to walk through the steps there. There's there's some documentation around how to do that. Um, but mm -hmm. specifically, you'll just you'll have to go to your willjohnson.dev site uh, where you bought the domain and update some records to point to Netlify so that you can set it up as a, a custom domain. Um, but once right, you get that cool. done, it'll be up and running. So you'll you'll go through and customize those those fields where you need to to get your site set up. Uh, so that you can start blogging and yeah once you once you get that blog rolling let us know so we can all follow your thoughts all right cool yeah i'm in i'm in the process of learning ruby so that'll mainly what it'll be about specifically rails but yeah so that's what it'll be about awesome that's great uh pick up a pigeon yeah you uh you can set up webhooks in most cmss and netlify will allow you to do that um in the build and deploy section you can set up a webhook so um, that would be the easiest way to do that. That's how I've done it for, for most of the things that I do. Um, oh, Rails is far from dead. There's so much Rails. Uh, but yeah, y'all, I, I think that's a stopping point for us. So um, this is going to be the last stream this week. It's Thanksgiving in the U.S., which means that I'm going to have a house full of family for the next few days. Um, we will pick it up again next week with who? I forget. We've got... Uh, Oh yeah, Divya is coming on. So this is gonna be great. Divya is one of my teammates at Netlify. She is a view and authentication wizard. She's also a former React developer. So she's going to teach us how to use Vue, um, but she's gonna bring in the context of knowing all the things that, that we like about React. So it should be really, really fun. Um, and it's gonna be great for me because I haven't learned a new framework in, in forever. So it's gonna be really good. Uh, you'll get to watch me struggle trying to get my head around the new the new way of thinking in view. Uh, that's going to be a whole bunch of fun. And then I also think next week we've got uh, Chris coming on. I need to double check. I don't think I've updated my calendar yet. But uh, yeah, so so come back Monday. We'll see you then. Um, chat, stay tuned. We are going to raid. Uh, Will, thank you so much for coming on today. Any parting words? Well, everybody, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, do something you don't know, in front, especially in front of people. We all don't know what we're doing, so just join us. I love it. I love it. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank you again.